Hey Greens, before we start, a reminder that the gold foil holy carp design is limited edition until March 21st. Once they're gone, they're gone. They come in pink, blue, and gold. Ah, uh, candles. When we think of them, we think of spa, relaxation, and sometimes aromatherapy. And on occasion we'll think about them because we lost power and we need to see some light, but then they only illuminate this much of the room. But that's not my point. Wait, what is my point? Hey Greens, welcome to episode 2 of Judging Your Country Based on Your Craft Kits. Which is pretty much Cash or Trash, the episode where I review multiple craft kits to make sure that I waste my money and you don't. Today we're going to be looking at two craft kits that are for candle making. The two countries that are going to be fighting each other today are again Japan and North American sold kits. The first one is an American made company called Ultimate Candle Making Kit by Anchor Art. The price for this one is about $15 and the box is pretty huge. It is quite the heavy kit. So I'm really excited and I do have to say I have high hopes on this one. The next kit is pretty tiny. I have to say I'm a little skeptical on this one, but it's a Japanese candle kit that has an environment. And coming in close to $20 for this seems a little plain. But the question is, which one do you have the least hope on? Let me know in the comment section below. I have to say I feel the least hope on the Japanese one, but we've been corrected before. Just because something looks cool, like all the rainbowy colors on the candle making kit, the North American one, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to make us happy. Because sometimes, North American kits, sometimes you like to break my heart. And my heart cannot take it so much all the time. Why? By the way, for those of you new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, otherwise this constant threat of waving sharp pointy things will continue. Do you want me to do it? Because some of you do like this. What if I have this instead? Our first kit. Ultimate candle making kit. Which promises that we can make three different candles. The colors on the front look really nice and the fact that the items in front are not just photoshopped, they seem like the actual pictures of the final product, make me happy. And by the way, the fact that ULTIMATE is holographic pleases me so much. Look at it. Look at it. I said look at the holo! And as I mentioned, it is pretty heavy, so we do get glass containers in there, obviously, because there's heat involved. Now I'm waving my finger. And look, now my finger has flames on top. How did that happen? I have no clue. One of the things in the back is, yes, we do everything that's in there, but it has our favorite sentence called, Includes everything you need. Usually, kits that say that don't actually include everything we need. But, but, but. It does seem that everything that we technically would need is in there, other than scissors. So I'm really, really curious and I'm so hopeful for this kit. Please, North America, get some points. All right, without further delay, let's see what's inside. Here's what we get inside. Three different sizes of glass jars swirly, square, and dragon egg. We also get seven colors of wax chips. And I have to say, these colors are pretty vibrant, so I'm totally digging it. We also get some kind of tool that apparently has a tracking number. If anyone would like to track this, go for it. Oddly enough, now this, this here is bothering me just a little bit because if you look at the front of the box, we're supposed to be getting our wick and the bases separately. See here, separately. But for some reason, they decided to cut them and include them already done for us. So that's quite disappointing. And we also get an instructional sheet. Time to read the instructions. All right, we've encountered our first issue. If you want to pause this, go ahead. But the biggest problem is that this instructional sheet is outdated. It actually mentions the whole rope wick in which the measurements that we have to chop off and that we have to integrate it into the actual stand. It even gives us a ruler to measure our rope. Close up, we get a ruler. 
And the instructions tell us that the rope itself, the wick, has to be between 0.75 inches or 1.9 centimeters above the top of the vase. So here's where the big problem is. Here's a container. Here's our wick slash rope that they pre-measured and cut for us. And remember, it has to be above the vase, about this much high. Ready? And... What? You saw it here first, my little grains. The wick is not even long enough to go past the vase. So by trying to be a little more cheap, or I don't know, maybe they were trying to be helpful, they ended up cutting the rope way smaller than their own outdated instructions said. So if they can't follow instructions, how do they expect me to do it? I knew they would disappoint me. And let's be clear, I'm not just being judgmental on one of these vases. Do you say vase or vase? I say vase. Let me know in the comment section below. Here it is, barely peeking at the dragon egg one. So, still not good. And the only one that might work is this one, but barely. Which basically means we're going to have to put some wax chips at the bottom and then hope to go higher or just make it so that it lights lower. But for those of you who want to say, But Yankee, the rope is not supposed to go higher than the base. Stop it! The instructions say so, and even the box. The box itself actually shows that the flame is above the vase level. And it's not like the wick is lower, it's going higher. And the instruction says above the top of the vase. Don't defy me, because if you defy me, that means you have a personality and I like that. Good for you for sticking up for yourself. I appreciate that. I respect that. Be your own little grain. But don't defy me! So basically what we're going to do is open these up and place them in whatever order we want. The other downside right away is that these are not resealable bags, so you better have something to hold those little pellets. Because look at that, it's gonna be a pain in the bum to clean. They get all over your floor. So let's go ahead and make a rainbow one. But wait, guess what? Yes, another problem. Everywhere on the box promises red, even those designs. But guess what? No red. We get two blues, but no red. All right, I have a feeling this is going to be a bit of a nightmare because it's not a resealable bag and it's really tiny little gem things. There you go. And we're going to put our first layer down. Actually, probably a couple of layers. Yeah, this is, this is not gonna be good. It's just melting through. I'm gonna keep putting more at the bottom just so that we can have the wick lifted a little more. I need it to be at least up here so that we can start lighting it higher. All right, let's, let's do it. So here's our candle, now we need fire. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to light this candle. The wick caught on pretty quickly. And in order to get a real reading on how this behaves, I'm going to leave it aside, I would say for about a couple of hours and see how the actual little, little wax chips behave. It hasn't been a few minutes yet and you can see that the wax chips are melting. My biggest concern is that it's probably going to end up caving in, but we'll see. Let's put it aside. All right, buddy, stay, stay put. We'll see you soon. Our next victim, what? I mean Kit, is the Japanese cube candle. What attracted me to this one is the fact that there's little fishies in there. I totally, totally never made any kind of environmental aquarium. Your very own betta fish in a tank. All done. All done. I like aquariums, okay? Don't judge me. And I'm not sure how I feel about this because even though the other one was $16 or $15, it does promise three candles. Not scented, not really much of an activity other than just pouring the, the wax colors. So I have no idea what to expect from this one. It seems like there's a little more to do because we have fishies. And my guess, according to the side instructions, it seems like we're going to be melting something. So, fingers crossed. And so let's see what we get inside.
By the way, this is 10 minutes later and the flame is practically gone. So, I'm watching you, buddy. Here's what we get inside. A square glass container. A wick with no base. Three colors of sand. White, purple, blue. We also get two fishies. We get Nemo and Dory. You know what that means. Hey, Bluefish, I need your help. Uh, how can I help you? I seem to have lost my son. But you're a fish. How did you lose a son? You're not understanding my child. I'm your child, Daddy? Oh, no. At this point, you subscribed. You know what you're expecting, dang it. We also got this thing that has some kind of transparent gooey gel. An instructional sheet. This kit so far is really annoying me. Because according to the instructions, we need to heat up the gel in a metal container. And there's absolutely no way I'm going to be heating this up in a container that I need to use. And for $20, I don't see how they couldn't give us a miniature aluminum container so that we could heat it up and then just dispose of it. Because I'm not going to be washing down some kind of waxy liquid down my drain. No. Japanese kit, you are disappointing me so far. And you, North American kit, you're no better. Don't look at me like that. You're no better. Also, the back of the instruction sheet tells us different ways that we can make fancy looking sand. They show us spoons, they show us some kind of sticks or toothpick. Honestly, for about $20, they could have at least included some kind of utensils or toothpick. It really wouldn't have hurt them. But hey, at least they gave us resealable bags for something we technically only need to use once. Right? I'm just saying. Why do they give us the things we don't want, but don't give us the things that we need? Why? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and fill up the bottom of this container because we need to put our fishies down. I'm gonna start with the white sand. Now I'm gonna go very basic. There we go. We only need to put it up until one and a half centimeters. All right, so the white completely disappeared at the bottom. That's not what was supposed to happen. Okay, well that sucks. Let's try and get some height with the purple. And the blue kind of disappeared already? What is that? It's gotta be the way that the glass has been placed. Come on, I'm gonna put all of it. And I'm gonna put the remainder of the blue on top. All right, so as you can see on this side of the glass container, we have practically none of the white. But if we turn it a little bit more this way, we get a little bit more. And then that way, it seems to have layered the way I wanted it, even though I did shake it to make it even. I don't understand. For those of you who do sand art, explain it to me, because I don't get it. All right, let's take the nicest side, which is this one. And we're going to take our toothpick and push down. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I like that. I like it a lot. And we'll do the same thing here. I don't think there's going to be much different at this point here. I wish we had more white. And there. And now we can go ahead and put our fish. I think we're going to put Nemo over here. This, this is sinking way lower than I expected, and Dory over there. So here they are. I guess this is where they belong. All right, so something does bother me again about this kit. After I put the fish in, they kind of just look like snuggled all the way down, <laughs> which is completely different from the box, because the box looks like they're kind of floating. Not floating as in flying, but they're not sinking into the sand. My guess is that on the box itself, look at that, I think it's water. Because when you look at it closely, there's no wick on top which means this picture was probably taken with fish in the water on the sand. That's my guess. Will it work? I highly doubt it, but we're gonna test it out and we're gonna see whether or not this thing here is going to look like the box. Put your vote. By the way, you wanna know how disappointed I am at this kit? It doesn't come with everything we need to make it. So instead of using a metal pan, I'm going to use the glass jar that we got from the other kit and I'm going to put the gel inside and do the double boiler method. For those of you who don't know, the double boiler method is pretty much where you're putting a container with a liquid or chocolate or whatever you need into another container that's the one being heated. So it's not really getting in contact with any kind of direct heat. Let's feel our gel and it says to make sure that the gel doesn't come in contact with water. Wa water, not water. Wow. Because if this comes in contact with water, what's going to happen is just it's going to turn milky white instead of transparent. So in you go. Oh, I'm gonna have to break that. 
Feels kind of nice. <laughs> Smells like nothing. Have to admit, both these candles had no scent, which is making me very sad. And just so that you see, this is what I'm using. A little bit of the heat is here. And I'm just going to keep stirring until it fully melts as per the instructions for about 15 minutes. Five minutes later. Here it is after five minutes. Five minutes later. Here it is after 10 minutes. I think five more minutes and we should be good. More moments later. All right, so here is our liquid. We can't, we can't diddle daddle for too long because if this hardens, then we're out. And here we go. Don't harden too soon. So far, so good. We should be able to go all the way up, but it is hardening pretty quickly. Look at that. Look at it jellify so quickly after 20 minutes of being on the heat. I did leave it for much longer. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, there we go. I'm glad I didn't use something I need to use. Wait, what did I say? So here it is. It's pretty much freshly poured, but I had a really strong feeling that this would be extremely bubbly and really hard to see. Just because it's a gel and there's sand. There's air bubbles, obviously. This is water, obviously. Let's put in the wick and wait the half an hour that they said in terms of letting it harden. My hopes are usually up here for Japanese kits, but when I saw this box, I'm like, ooh, ooh, saltiness. Shall be strong with this one. And in your, ooh, that was way too fast. Come on, I'm gonna put it here. There. Nope, you stay in, buddy. You stay in. A little longer than a few minutes later. So here we are about half an hour later, and as you can see, it's solidified. This, this is not good. This is not looking good, Grains. Remember when I was worried about this being stuck to the glass? Well, it pretty much gets stuck to itself, kind of like slime, and it comes off really easily. Look at that. It came out in one piece, which if my calculations are correct, this should lift easily. Oh yeah, look at that. Yup, that means it would easily come off if you flipped it upside down, so be careful with that. All right, let's light it up. You know what that means? <laughs> you know what to do. Good. All right, time to light our wick and see what happens. Oh, that is satisfying. Oh no. Oh no, what's happening? Don't disappear. Don't you dare disappear. That is the tiniest flame. Actually, that's not true. Hang on. Let me bring the American one. Here they are side by side. And you can see the American one is actually dying down very slowly. And the Japanese one, so far, we just lit it, but it got really small. So let's wait another half an hour and I'll update you grains on whether or not this one closed down or if it's just going to stay tiny. I'm actually curious how much light they give off. Let's get the lights. All right, lights coming off now. There we go. All right, so I'm going to move the Japanese one over here. There we go. So this is the light that we're getting so far from the North American kit, not much. And if we bring the Japanese one, it definitely has a lot more luminance to it. And my guess is because it is transparent, so the reflection is a lot stronger. I'm very upset about the fact that there's just bubbles. That's all, I could barely see it. I knew this would happen, I know it, but it's pretty, pretty lit. Here we are 30 minutes later. The North American one is still pretty much the same size it was 10 minutes after it started, which is pretty tiny. And the Japanese one still has a pretty long flame. Now, what does this mean? Is the Japanese one good or is the North American one better? Let's see. Fight! And yes, as you saw in my book, both of them are trash! The reason why I wouldn't recommend either of these two on my desk right here is because there really wasn't any kind of playability. The materials and the instructions were not in sync. For the price of $20 almost, we're getting mediocre type candles. And especially the Japanese one is most definitely not something a beginner or a young person can do. Beginner, yes. Young person, no. And it's cloudy. Let's look at the picture again at the front of the box. Yeah, that's, that's water which means I have yet to have a candle kit that I really like because both of these go in the trash. 
if you're anything like me, you're probably curious. Since this is a gel, and we can't put our finger in there, what is it like? So it's pretty much just the gel form that hardens very quickly again. Look at that. So that's, that's all it is. Should I put my finger in there? That's what he said! <laughs> I'm curious. I'm gonna put my finger. Probably not smart. But yeah, it is hot, just like wax. And it does peel right off. Don't do this at home, by the way. I just happened to like doing that since I was a kid. Oh, oh, live! Did you grains just see that? The North American one turned off all by itself. Replay. Oh, oh! It just, it went. So at least now we know that the North American one can only last about an hour and a half. Interesting. I'll keep an eye on the Japanese one, but I'm pretty sure it's going to stay strong. By the way, let me know which one do you disagree with me? Do you think one of them is a clear winner? Especially for the price, value, playability, and the lack of sense. For me, they're both losers. Thanks for nothing! If you want to watch the previous Cash or Trash, make sure you check up here, and if you want to watch a crafty video, check it out down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.